Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome to Delilah's Downloads, um, where we are just speaking simply, saying the things that need to be said. I'm so excited to be with you guys today. It is on the heels of an awesome conference that I got to attend this weekend, the original conference, original women's conference that was held in Rockford, Illinois. Fantastic. If I have any ladies joining here, um, I encourage you to um, www.originalconference.com um, for next year's conference. You don't want to miss it. It was definitely an anointed um, experience. But today, um, coming to you guys with the word, of, word from God, um, coming from a word from God in the, in the book of Exodus, really, really excited to bring it to you. But before we get started, first things first. Um, a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you, Father, um, that we have breath in our lungs this morning, um, that we have sight in our eyes. Father, we thank you that you have given us yet, a, yet another opportunity to grow closer to you um, and in doing so, growing, growing closer to one another, Father. Father, we thank you for the people that you are putting in our path, Father, and the exciting work that you are doing in their lives, Father, and um, and for the tasks and support that you have um, you have prompted us to do in their lives, Father. We thank you that we get an opportunity to serve um, one another, Father. We thank you for the glorious word, Father, that we're about to jump in, Father, and we thank you that um, each one of us is prepared to receive what you have for us specifically, Father, um, and that we are expecting great revelation, Father. Um, specific revelation to each one of us as we go into your word. We thank you for the blood of, the, of um, Jesus, Father, and we just thank you um, for your forgiveness, your redemption, your salvation, your love, um, your, 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 your adoration, Father. We just thank you. In these things we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, again, coming out of the book of Exodus, and here we're really exploring the story of Moses and the Israelites as they're in the desert. Um, a lot really baked in here and to be completely transparent, um, I struggled a little bit on how I would kind of structure this, but I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit take over and just share it as it is. Um, so there will be several, um, I just encourage you really to kind of check out Exodus and the story of the Israelites in the desert. Um, one verse that stuck out to me, stuck out to me um, was when God was talking to Moses, and this is in Exodus 19, 4, um, let's say 3, 3 and 3 through 5, um, where it says, Then Moses went to God, and, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, um, and you are to tell the people of Israel. So this is the Israelites. Yourselves, you yourselves have seen what I, God, did in Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words, Moses, you are to speak to the Israelites. So God came through, um, and basically what God imparted onto Moses uh, were promises, um, direction and promises. So God is basically setting Moses up to say, hey, you go mind these folks, right? I'm the same God that they saw split the Red Sea. I'm the same God that they saw bring plagues upon Egypt just for their freedom. So remind them of who I am and just for their freedom so then they could come meet with me and come talk with me. Um, so remind them of who I am before you give them these instructions and give them these promises. And so he goes on in chapter 20, um, basically 2021, 20, and, and tells them, um, no, 2021, 20, 22, yeah, all in there and tells them of the different promises um, and different directions that they have to obey in order to keep the covenant with God. Um, and at the end result, basically over here in chapter 32, um, 32 and 4, at the end of that, basically, um, oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a little off. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. 
So take it back. We're in 24. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're in 24 at the end of 7 where they respond. We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. So Moses comes and shares the promises and the directions to the Israelites. And they're like, we got it. Yep, we remember that God who did the awesome things for us. And we will do everything that he has said and we will obey. It sounds pretty simple. It sounds pretty simple, right? We we see God show up in our lives with different signs and wonders. And at the end of the day, that should be enough. That should be enough for us to continue to obey God, serve God, and believe in God. Um, I have testimonies in my own life where I know it's been nothing but God. And I'm certain um, if we all took the time, took the time to look back, we would all find um, situations in our life where we knew it wasn't nothing, anything but God um, that showed up and worked in that situation. That should be enough. What really got me in, the, in this particular story in Exodus about the Israelites and Moses is um, the second time when Moses went up to talk to God. Um, and as he was up talking to God, um, it was him and some other folks that God had asked to come up, but then only Moses could come up further to talk with God. And here, God is really giving instruction to Moses on how to worship him, how to instruct the people to worship him, who's going to help lead the people, right? Who's going to help become priests and how these priests are going to be consecra consecrated. So God was having additional time with Moses in preparation for the benefit of the people. Because through God, through the worship to God, right, through our worship to God comes um, revelation and blessing. So God was giving additional instruction on worship, leadership, consecration for the benefit of the people. Somewhere along the line, the Israelites got impatient. It may sound familiar. Somewhere along the line, even though they're like, we're going to obey everything God has said. Yeah, we remember that God who did those wonders in our life. Somewhere along the line, during the 40 days that Moses was up on that hill, Mount Sinai, um, the Israelites were like, we don't know what happened to Moses. And because we don't know what happened to Moses, we're now going to create our own idols. Um, and we're going to begin worshiping other gods. Because God is God and Moses are taking too long. So even though God has given us clear instruction, clear direction, and a clear understanding of the promises, if we were to follow that instruction, we've gotten impatient, and now we want to take, our, take things into our own hands and do things for ourselves. Well, I'm pretty sure we all know the end of the story on how that really doesn't work, on how that really doesn't work. So what I heard was that um, when God gives us instruction and promise, we are to stand on them. There is no becoming impatient. Um, it's, it's my, my pastor talks about the law of the harvest. When things are seeded, it takes time, and then there's a harvest. So sometimes there's, um, sometimes it's just a, a time, a season for, for waiting. Um, and that's another thing I heard, heard was a season for waiting and preparing. Waiting and preparing. Um, everything has a season. Everything has a season. So when you're waiting, when God has showed up in your life, that's all to say, when God has showed up in your life, you have proof that God has showed up in your life, right? You know it in your heart. And he's giving you instruction um, and promise on the next thing to occur in your life. There may be a season, most times there will be a season that we will have to just simply wait and prepare. Wait and prepare because what's happening while we're waiting, right, is what God is talking to Moses about on the hill while the Israelites are there on the, on the land where God is working out. Um, he's hammering out the detail on how many talents need to be used. Um, how long should the curtain be? Uh, what material should be the covering? Um, who will be in position to teach you? How am I going to prepare them? While we're waiting, God is preparing a thing for us. 
So you don't want to become too impatient where you're going to skip over and bypass what God is preparing for you to go take off all of your gold and melt it and create your own um, gold calf and begin to worship something that shouldn't be worshipped. And it became so to the point because what you will do when you take things into your own hand and begin to um, think, oh, well, I did this. I took that into my own hand and I'm the reason I got this well. I'm the reason I got this promotion. I'm the reason I got this notoriety. You start to worship the wrong things. You, sh you start to worship the idle things. And you and in and, and 32, and this is when 32 comes up, in Exodus 32 at the end of 4, these people actually say, these are the gods that they created. They actually say, these are the gods, um, Israel, who brought us, brought us out of Egypt. They got it all confused. Even though they know that this golden calf was not even around when they came out of Egypt. Now that they've taken things into their own hands and, and worshiping this idol, now they got it all confused on who, who brought them where, to whom the glory and praise is due. So be real careful when you start to mess up God's timing and put things into your own hand. And then the enemy further complicates it and confuses you and start to make you believe that one thing is another. I'll let this plane come by. Be careful on starting to believe that one thing is a, a, another. Give all glory is due to God. If there is favor in your life, it is due to God. Do not go about creating gold idols. Just stand. God's giving you direction. God's giving you promise. Continue to praise and worship him in that thing. Continue to talk to him. Oh, Father, you see me down here getting anxious, but your word says to not be anxious about anything, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving in my heart, make my petition known to you, right? Talk to God about that thing. Do not go out like, well, he's not moving, right? So God said, create Delilah's downloads, okay? Um, I'm thinking that there's a next step. And I know I've clearly heard from God um, through dreams and visions on Delilah, there's a next step. Um, and I, I have an idea. I think there's a season in which it happens, but I'm waiting for God to, to give me additional information. I'm waiting for God to put leaders in place that will pour into my life. Um, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for God. Because as soon as I say, you know what, Lord, you're taking too long. How about, um, and naturally, I know that these are some steps I'm gonna, I, I should take. So I'm just going to take, I'm going to miss the whole thing. I'm going to miss the covenant that God has created. I'm going to miss the fruit on the other side of um, souls that I get to save, all because I don't want to be patient. So fam, if you are in a season of waiting and preparing Wait and prepare. Don't rush it. God is planning something for you. There are chapters, chapters on God talking to Moses about what the tabernacle will look like, um, what Aaron and his what Aaron and his son should wear. I mean, he's just hammering out how long it should be, how wide it should be, how many it should be. I mean, he is working through the detail, and he is not a respecter of people. The same preparation he, he took the time to do for the Israelites, he is taking the time to do for us. So wait, fam. Wait and stand and watch him manifest itself. Because if you don't, if you look at the word, when God saw what was happening on the ground and sent Moses back down there, people lost their lives. It resulted in death. That idol worship for about 3,000 people resulted in death. So how about we just be obedient? And how about we be patient? And how about we wait on the hand of God and the word of God, the instruction of God, the leadership of God to take us to the next place he's intended for us? So that's a lot, fam, just to say there's sometimes a season of preparing and waiting. Be sure to prepare and wait. Until the next time, family, I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Um, blessings be unto you and have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.